Hi there, and welcome to this video on the dentistry interview, focusing on the topic of sugar tax. I'm Alice from Dentist Mind, where we go through the important topics of the dentistry interviews. Whichever university you're applying for, MMI or panel, we've got you covered. If you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button. Whilst you're watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything. We've got helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you. The following video is a free sample of our full interview course, which you can buy by clicking on the link below in the description. So, let's get started. Hello and welcome to lesson 5 on NHS Dentistry. This time we're going to have a look at the sugar tax, the implications which it's had and the reasons why it was introduced in the first place. So what is the sugar tax? Well, in 2016, George Osborne proposed this idea to bring in a tax on sugar sweetened drinks as a way to help combat childhood obesity. It was actually introduced in April 2018. In 2013, the British Medical Journal carried out a study which proposed that 20% tax on sugar sweetened drinks would help reduce obesity in the UK by about 1.3%. So there was quite significant research done to back up the reasons why this tax was introduced. So why are we introducing the sugar tax? Well, tooth decay is costing the NHS about 3.4 billion pounds a year at the moment. And it's predicted that by introducing the sugar tax, it's going to be a massive game changer in terms of oral health and reducing the problems that dentists face in terms of high caries rates and other things related to sugar intake. A report by Public Health England has implied that we may be able to save about 15 billion pounds a year from the NHS and about 80,000 lives purely by reducing the sugar intake of the population. Today, children and teenagers are eating about three times as much sugar as they should. And this isn't just children and teenagers that's affecting, a lot of adults are also significantly over consuming in sugar. So how will the sugar tax work? Well, there are two bands. You've got a higher band and a lower band in terms of the number of grams of sugar per 100 millilitres of a drink. It does mean that slightly more um, will be charged for these higher sugar content drinks on top of the normal price of the drink. However, fruit juices and milk-based drinks will be exempt. These have slightly different sugars in them to the extrinsic sugars added to most sugary drinks, whereas fruit drinks are intrinsic sugars and you've also got milk-based sugars, so it's slightly different, which is why they're going to be exempt from this policy. So here are some examples of companies who have followed the sugar tax and who haven't followed the sugar tax. Um, although you might have noticed in supermarkets that the full sugar coke, you see slightly smaller size uh, containers, smaller size bottles for the same price as their diet or zero versions. So they might not have followed sugar tax in the same way, but they are slightly reducing the sizes available for the same price. So it's a slightly different interpretation of the law. In terms of this sugar tax, it's not something that is purely for the UK. Other countries have also implemented similar things, especially in Mexico, and they have noticed a massive reduction in the number of sugary beverages being consumed. Therefore, it's quite good evidence to suggest that a law like this really helps to reduce population sugar intake. There's also quite similar laws in France and Norway as well. So how does the sugar intake relate to your teeth? Well, tooth decay is caused by bacteria in the mouth which feed on sugary foods. And when they metabolize these sugary foods, they produce acid which erodes the surface of your teeth. So when you're drinking beverages with sugar in them, you're purely providing the exact nutrients that these bacteria need to produce the acid. And therefore it really contributes to tooth decay and can lead to a lot of caries in many patients. So you're talking about the sugar content of a lot of drinks here, but we also have to take into consideration the fact that a lot of these drinks are also very acidic. Although in the diet drinks, you might not have the sugar, you also do have the acidic nature of them as well as in the regular drinks, in sodas, energy drinks, fruits, juices, they're all very acidic. And the acid in the drink acts as a direct erosion factor on the teeth, so you are losing tooth tissue by drinking these. So the tooth erosion occurs when acid attacks your enamel, and therefore it just slowly erodes away and it gets thinner and thinner, which may eventually expose the tooth underneath, which can cause sensitivity and be quite painful. So like I said, eroding this enamel just literally leaves your tooth exposed to the oral cavity and to all the external factors which can cause this sensitivity and the pain that you might feel. So the Faculty of General Dental Practice 
have said that they think the levy should be spent on oral health promotion. So the extra money gained from charging a little bit more for sugary drinks, they want it to be put into spending more money on promoting good oral health to try and prevent oral disease occurring in the first place. They've also called for this sugar tax to be extended into milk-based drinks as well. So like I said, they have slightly different sugars in them, but it's still sugar which can feed the oral bacteria and can still influence on your tooth decay. Um, therefore, they would like, quite like the tax to be introduced into these drinks as well. As well as this, they want some reductions in the marketing and promotion of sugary drinks. So they're just less appealing and you don't see children who see an advert for a really sugary drink and want it. They want to try and get rid of this so you're not attracting people to drink these drinks in the first place. This slide is just giving you a bit of data, some of the facts and figures about the sugar tax, about the rates it is, what's included, what's not, and the kind of money involved in the process of implementing a new law like this and what we're likely to save and see in the future. So a potential question around this subject will be, should we continue to expand the sugar tax? Well, this is something that you wanna have a think about because you could quite easily get asked this by an interviewer. If you want to have a second now to pause the video and write down some ideas about how you would answer this question, that's a really good idea. And so just pause it now and take a bit of time to think about it. So having had a bit of a think about your answer, you now have some ideas about why the sugar tax should be expanded and why it shouldn't written on the slide here. So again, if you want to pause the video, read through these and compare them to what you've written, maybe change your answer and improve it a little bit. And therefore you'll have a good balanced answer so if they ask you this question in an interview you could say well these are some of the benefits of the tax and see these are some of the drawbacks um, and therefore you've got quite a balanced argument and you can talk about it with good knowledge about the topic. Another question that you could be asked would be what are some alternatives to the sugar tax? So again if you want to pause this video now and have a second to write down some answers or think of an answer then do that now. So these are some of the ideas we've come up with for what the alternatives to the sugar tax might be. You've got, for example, cutting down portion sizes of unhealthy foods. Um, you could come down on the advertising for sugary foods. Like I said, if you're not appealing to people to drink these in the first place or eat these in the first place, then it's going to try and stop this at the source. Again, you could re reduce the number of discounts and sales promotions on sugary foods because if you see something that's buy one get one free, you're going to get twice as much sugar than you would if they're not promoted at all and also to educate people about the harmful effects of sugar. So it's really important that people understand what they're taking in and the impact it's going to have on their body. So a lot of people won't understand that having sugar affects your teeth so dramatically and educating patients so they actually know the impacts of the sugar will really help them to understand why they should try and reduce their sugar intake. So what's next for the sugar tax? Well, Boris Johnson has criticised it and said that he could look to end it. So this is a potential outcome which could happen from this tax being introduced. There's also the possibility that sugar tax could be expanded and more products included, for example, these milk-based drinks. Um, and again, various studies are publishing the effects of the tax um, and trying to evaluate how it's going to impact and what the next steps of this tax may be. So these are a few things to be aware of in interview. If they ask you what it could happen in the future with the tax, you've got a few ideas here of what you could say. So that was lesson five and lesson five is now complete. I hope that's helped you to understand the sugar tax and have a good idea of what to say if you get asked about it in one of your interviews. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe by clicking below and please leave a comment. Click here to continue watching our interview series and to unlock full access to 70 tutorials covering core interview topics, MMI mocks, top tips and more, click on the link in the description below.